Artificial intelligence is the new frontier. Where will it take us next? AI. Not a single day goes by without a breaking news about AI. From product and launches to more established companies, AI is everywhere. It has been established that 70% of the product for startups are going to launch an AI feature by the end of the year. Our parents are using ChatGPT, the government is trying to regulate AI, AI is everywhere. AI, 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 ready AI. If you've been heads down building an AI feature or AI product or you're thinking about doing it, then I'm going to share four little secrets on how to build a product with AI. By the end of the video, you will have a clear understanding of the opportunity to build on top of AI. You're gonna know what are the two types of product you can build on top of AI, what is the biggest challenge with AI that no one talks about, and what kind of UX you can adopt for your AI feature. Let's dive in. Secret number one, the opportunity with AI. AI is a shift in terms of what information is available and can be leveraged. Before AI, a traditional API will return a data which was predefined and stored by the engineer who worked on it. With AI, you're finally able to return some unique value that did not exist in an insanely short amount of time. ChatGPT is the living proof of the value of AI. It has set a record for the fastest growing app to reach 100 million monthly active users only within two months after the launch. To give you a comparison, TikTok took nine months and Instagram took two years and a half. What's even more exciting about AI is that the AI models that are being developed today are getting better each day exponentially. Also, the costs are going down. So whatever you see today as available is only the most basic version of what will be available in the future. But let's be honest, using AI today is not like buying a gold stock 20 years ago. There are also a couple of little dirty secrets you need to know. Secret number two, there are two types of AI product you can build. So AI is all over the place, but really there are two types of product you can build if you think about it. The first one is what I call AI core. It means you're building the core technology of AI so that other AI companies can build on top of you. This includes companies like OpenAI, Anthropic, or BART. Here, the market opportunity is huge because every company building with AI is going to build on top of this layer. But there are many challenges. First, it's very costly, so you need very deep pocket. It's very technical, so you need hardcore engineering skills. And the last one is that you need a great timing. You need to be ahead of your market if you want to get a chance to win. Maybe one last comment is that this market is pretty political. I foresee a leader in the US, in Europe, and in Asia just because owning the AI core is going to be a driver of soft power for many states. The second type is what I call the AI layer. It means you're building a layer of AI on top of an existing AI core company. This is where most companies are going today and it's really exciting because you can launch and iterate really fast with your customers. The disadvantage though is that you don't have usually a great moat. It means that people can replicate what you're doing. By the way, only building the AI core doesn't mean that you can't deliver end value to the consumers by yourself. This is the case of Midjourney that did a partnership with Discord to actually plug their technology into an existing chat tool that people are already familiar with. Now, one thing is changing. Building both the AI core and the AI layer has become extremely challenging because of how good the AI core companies have become. I'll take an example, Copy AI, which is a product that allows you to write copy for, let's say, tweets and articles automatically. They used to have their own technology on the AI core, but recently with the improvement of GPT-3 and 4, many competitors started to plug into these technologies to launch competitors. So now that we have seen that not everything is shiny in AI Wonderland, I want to talk about the elephant in the room. Secret number three, the main challenge with AI. AI is not a one fit all solution for the challenges of a startup. The unspoken problem is retaining customers on their AI features. There have been very poor retention curve on these features. For many, many products, AI is currently a toy and not really solving an actual problem in a better way that make users sticky. AI is a little bit of a fashion at the moment and many people are jumping on the bandwagon. When those things are hyped, there's a lot of noise and product market fit is kind of hidden. And this actually raises a question, which is whether this technology is actually more useful to solve users' problems today than with the previous technologies we had. There are a few more challenges with AI that I just want to mention very quickly. The first one is legal. Should you have extra terms and conditions because now you have a new subprocessor, maybe in the US? The second one is the pricing. Running AI is still pretty pricey. So should you charge your customers for that? If yes, how much? What's the philosophy with AI? The third one is open source. Should you host the most model yourself or should you use a third-party services? And the last one, but not the least, is the UX. 
what kind of experience should you deliver on top of AI so that people reach your value proposition as fast as possible. I want to dive into the fourth one, the challenge with UX in AI. The UX of AI. So the secret I want to share is that the UX you build around your AI can make or break the experience. For the AI core, this is pretty simple. You're still using an API, except you will return some unique value. For the AI layer, this is where things become a lot more interesting. Now you have to design an input or an output system. The input is the entry point into your AI features. There are three types of them. The prompt, which is what you have with ChatGPT, with an open field where you can write something down. The second one is the pre-can prompt, or basically the idea that a software engineer, a prompt engineer has defined already what you need. This is the case with Notion AI, when you can over some text and there is only a limited number of options. The third one is the automated prompt. It's what you have with Copilot, where basically you just turn on the AI and on a regular basis, when the timing is the right one, the AI will come up and say, do you need my help? The types of prompt you go with depend on the nature of questions that people can ask. For instance, ChatGPT can answer really any kind of questions, so they went with open prompts. Some companies want to control the experience, this is the case of Notion AI, or some companies are also concerned that AI can hallucinate, and that's why they go also for the pre can prompt, where they can really, really train what they want to prompt to be about and answer. This being said, it seems that more and more products are leaning toward the open prompt versus the pre can prompt as the AI models become more and more accurate. This is a case of copy AI that used to be only working with pre can prompt and now only has open prompt. One word on automated prompt, I think this is just a great UX when it's assisting what you're already doing and helping you complete the work that you currently do. Now the output, it's the way the AI is going to return the value. There are two types. The single value is when the AI will return to you one answer to the question. This is the case with ChatGPT that returns to you one answer only. Multiple values such as mid journey that gives you four results from which you can pick up from. One value is a great user experience if you think you can return the right answer to your customers right away. For creative jobs like Midjourney does, usually providing to your customers a set of like two or three explorations is usually what customers prefer, hence this experience. The last piece of UX which is extremely important is giving an escape door. Because we're trying to be smart with AI about the value and the answer that people want, we may be wrong. And this is where it's usually a great practice to give an escape door to the customer to actually tell, this is wrong, give me another answer. This is called re-prompting and you want something slightly different. It often takes the shape of a chat where basically people can follow up and say, I didn't like that, give me the next thing. The best AI features out there all encompasses and re-prompting. This is really how you improve the model and make sure that it also adapts to each single customer. So these are the four secrets I learned about building a feature with AI. But I want to wrap up with a few reflections. I think what's even more exciting going forward is not so much what kind of AI features we're going to build, but how AI is going to impact us as a company and as individuals to actually build things. So, you know, I haven't met a single engineer that told me that she didn't like to use AI with Copilot to write code. You know, I've met some designers at Nike that were using Mid Journey to prototype the Nike's Nike store in New York. AI is inevitable and it will just penetrate deeper and deeper into our processes as companies and individuals. Also, the application we have seen today always involve a human, but soon the human will not be needed. There is something called GPT on top of GPT and there is this repo called AutoGPT that went absolutely mad where basically a GPT bot trains another one as almost like a project manager and there is already the first sales rep that you know lead candidates and send emails that is up and running without any humans being involved. I'm really excited to see where this whole thing is going to go not only how we're going to build AI product going forward how it's going to be cheaper and faster and easier to do it but also how as individuals and as companies we're going to be impacted in our day-to-day -day and leveraging AI and this I think is the biggest secret of all that I wanted to share with you. Thanks so much for staying with us till now. I hope you learned some things. I hope it was valuable. Let me know if you have any comments and follow-up questions and see ya. Bye.